What's up, everybody? Welcome to a kind of funny first impression slash XCast segment. We'll talk about that in one second. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the master of hype, Snow Bike Mike. Mike, how are you? I'm so good, Greg. Thanks for having me on a first impressions and awesome to tie it in to the kind of funny XCast. I was going to say, thank you for having me on the Kind of Funny X-Cast. Uh, Mike, I haven't given you a lot of information here. I sent you a trailer. I said I want to do this crossover content where this video would go up as a first impression on its own at Embargo and then get inserted into the X-Cast as well. I want to talk to you about Nobody Saves the World. What do you know about this game? Greg Miller, I know absolutely nothing besides a nice, quick 1 minute and 20 second trailer that I have now seen 20 minutes prior to recording this. Exactly. Nobody knows anything about Nobody Saves the World because when this first impression goes live, it's the big reveal about Nobody Saves the World. It's the new game from uh, Drinkbox Studios. Of course, if you're a PlayStation fan, you know them quite well. Uh, Guacamelee, uh, of course, Mutant Blobs Attack before that, uh, Severed over on the PlayStation Vita. A whole bunch of great games with a really unique art style and usually great stories and great gameplay. And I'm happy to report that Nobody Saves the World is more of that, Mike. I got to play about an hour of it, uh, 45 minutes of a demo of it and run through this action RPG from Drinkbox, which, shockingly, let me check my notes just to make sure, coming to Xbox Series X slash S, Xbox One, uh, the Windows Store, and Steam. That's it. They have turned their back on PlayStation. They've turned their back on the Vita. They're all in on this Xbox business. It is an Xbox Game Pass day one game. Uh, very exciting because I, I played this right now in the time loop. It's weird, right, of where we're recording this and it'll go live next week. I actually played it, what, a week and a half ago. And it is honestly, Mike, one of those games that I haven't been able to stop thinking about since I played it. Oh, Greg, I love hearing you say that. That's right, because... I look at this drink box game and I think of Guacamelee and Guacamelee 2. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that resonate with me. And I love that art style. I love the colorful nature. And I love that side scrolling beat em up action that I got from Guacamelee. But watching this trailer looks totally different, Greg. This is a new of game course. here, but it's got me. And like you said, over on the Xbox side, it's kind of funny X cast. We love that kind of stuff. But day and date, game pass. And I love that. I love Best that. Best in the gaming. Best in the gaming. You know that. Yeah, so uh, if you're listening to this in the Xcast, not being able to watch it over on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games comes, we watch it. Let's get into what is actually happening in Nobody Saves the World. So the idea here is that a calamity has come to town. It has befallen everybody. There's a horrible thing happening. and Everybody turns their eyes to the wizard who usually saves them, but the wizard is, in fact, nowhere to be found. So nobody, you, the character named Nobody, picks up the wand and begins your journey to save it. But the way it works is a little bit of Kid Chameleon, where nobody is just as you, I'm sure, Roger, showing you in the footage here a blank white character he looks like little depressed boy if you remember from the con the uh, greg's comic book clubs uh and the idea here is that you actually unlock different forms in this game through a skill tree that you use that come with their own exclusive moves that you also level up and get that way and upgrade and improve and so uh, there's this like not a skill tree but a form tree mike and you see we start as the rat uh which is just this basic uh character that you can go through and attack and then from there you can go to the ranger you can go to the magician you can move your way up uh, to egg and you can go through all these different uh characters and forms that you'll use to then go out and again they say action rpg but dungeon crawl right it is this 2D uh, sprite running around on this, uh, not sprite, but 2D character model, these um, amazing models uh, drawn on this amazingly detailed, uh, colorful world that has so much life and personality to it. And as you run out there, you fight other enemies, you kill them, you have a health bar, you have a mana bar, you're pulling special moves, and you're leveling up the character. You're upgrading the moves. And when I say character, I mean forms. Uh, you're leveling up your forms, and when you hurt, uh, hit certain thresholds for those forms, you then unlock additional forms that you can go do. So my demo started mike with me being the rat which had this lovely gameplay loop of you know the basic attack that is you run around and chomp 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 on these people right and as you're chomping on them what you're doing is every hit of the chomp you use you're building up mana which you then can spend mana for a special attack that when you do this huge bite on things you actually earn back your health so it's this constant cycle of getting in close maybe i take a few hits but i kill that thing uh, then on the next thing use them you know the giant mana spend to then get health back in the system and go. And all of this gets important because leveling in Nobody Saves the World, they were very clear about this on their fact sheet, which I like, is it's questing, not grinding. Player progression and new abilities are obtained exclusively by completing quests, not by defeating monsters. Quests range from complete a dungeon to poison baddies to cheer up a fellow rabbit lover. And so if you're watching the footage right now, you see 
at all points uh, your left bumper is on the left side of the screen there with little icons showing you as you go through this game how much you're filling in these other quests to move on and then of course if you look up at the top right you see the HUD with the health the, the mana but you also see uh, the overall level and then the rating for the character right so my rat is maybe a D but I'm trying to get it up to a C which would unlock the magician and so on and so forth as you go through and pow through these what 25 dungeons is what they have Ooh. right now uh, they have uh, procedurally they're procedurally generated so they evolve and they get tougher as you go through it uh, the quests are unlocking the new forms you're doing all these different things you're you know going out but then so uh, as i played through the three classes i got to play were the rat which then unlocked the magician the magician like dope as hell because the magician's deal is he runs around and hit one of his attacks is just extend like this is your card kind of thing where he opens up his deck of cards and then one card would shoot out and attack other people not like across the way you'd have to be right in front of him and do it but that was obviously uh building up one of your meters i forget if it was mana or whatever it must have been mana to then use the special attack of being able to conjure a rabbit out of your hat pull a rabbit out of your hat that would then fight alongside you and the amazing thing here was it wasn't just one rabbit if you had for as much mana as you wanted to spend you could have that many rabbits so there's parts in this demo where i'm running around with this like army of rabbits that are doing so much damage for me that i don't have to worry about and i thought that was just you know an uh, awesome cool move and then uh towards the end of the demo i unlocked the ranger which is a ranged class obviously not ra obviously but you, you could uh, extrapolate from shooting or bow and arrow you know having those kind of moves and having a dash for it and ranger is usually what i would play at as in a, as in a diablo right so i thought oh i want to unlock the early on when they told me all this i was like oh i'd unlock that i'm probably going to stick with that character the rest of the way the biggest comment i can pay uh, nobody saves the world right is the fact that all of the different forms i unlocked were fun to play and all of them actually had me bouncing around i i, I expected you know to be going and be like oh well the rat's the rat that's going to be lame i'm going to unlock that i'm going to have the rat and then want to get out of that class as soon as possible but as i got into these big boss battles as i got into these rooms that were you know shooting arrows down both sides and there was all these different uh, monsters in there or going up against the big bads in these dungeons it was such like oh my gosh you know i've been doing the magician i've been having uh this giant uh, array of rabbits out to attack and my health is down and i can't regen health as the magician so i'll switch back to the rat get in some easy bites on the you know the ads that are running around then be able to use the big grab to do big damage to the boss but also heal myself and so suddenly there was this strategy to it right and it was the same thing when you introduced the ranger class of all right cool now i have somebody who can stand back and play defense right like get out shoot from afar and have to worry about it that way it opened up so many interesting gameplay possibilities just for those three characters right and as you go through i'm trying to figure out if they if i have it in my notes because i thought i asked them they have they're going to have so many different forms in the game as you go uh, i'm sure raj is showing you as you go through this this giant thing as you go through the tree of how many games or how many characters are actually going to be there for you to do and what gets cool about it mike is that as i was saying you know everybody has their own rating from you know f to s i think uh as you would in a grading system in a video game uh but as you get their abilities and you upgrade those abilities you also get the ability to customize and mix and match so it's going to be that i can go in and be like all right cool i love having the rabbit army but i also want to take that you know quick bite that uh, is going to fill my mana or whatever for, from the rat and put it on to the magician and have him run and do that and that is interesting on in and of itself but as you'll see uh, in the footage roger has uh, some of the enemies as I was seeing late late in the game or late in my game right going through was okay cool this one you know has there's four different types of attack here right and I look at my notes right they're sharp blunt dark and light some of the enemies you're going to run into eventually you're going to find that okay they're invulnerable to everything on their first hit except sharp damage so i have to use a sharp attack to actually break through that to then do it and so again i could see that being a drag in some games this one it wasn't it was fun to switch off between my uh, pe people or mix in a custom ability to just have it on uh, this is clearly a thing where it's going to be all blunt people that i need to fight right away put a blunt attack on the magician have him ready to go and then go out from there i'm rambling mike because yeah, i like this are. game so much what questions do you have for me uh, first off i love when you ramble greg because you're enthusiastic shines your energy comes out and i know you're passionate about the game and that's what i love the most and you actually touched on so many things that got me excited about it right we started with the the art style right that jumps yeah. out at you how colorful how detailed it is and then you jumped into the different forms right just from the trailer that i got to see right there was a bodybuilder the magician you touched on the ranger there's a turtle out there running around i love the idea of the different forms and i'm really excited to see 
how big that form tree is. I'm not calling it yeah. a skill tree. I'll call it the form tree. The of like form tree. The different bodies all unlocked and get to, you know, become is really, really cool. And then the other one they brought up is like mixing the abilities. That was the one thing that jumped mm -hmm. out to me during that trailer. It was like, oh, I'm not just the rat with his four abilities. No, I'll add in the, you know, the magician skills. I saw the bodybuilder. He had a tiger. He had the rabbit jump out of the hat. I thought that was really cool. The turtle in the trailer, you get to see he's throwing out the ranger arrow. So I love the idea of like, maybe instead of being stuck to one form with those abilities that you love, I like maybe more for me with the art style of like, oh, I liked that horse form. I want to be the horse, yeah. but I want to mix and match the abilities that I know will work well with the different enemies I encounter. You touched on it well. I'm always looking for a good dungeon crawler, right, right Greg? Like, I want to tune out. I want to beat up baddies, and I want to have fun. And I love the idea of what we just saw. You said 25 levels, is that correct? 25 dungeons, yeah, 25 is what they're dungeons, saying. About yeah. five or six of those are legendary dungeons. Uh, there is the procedural, what do they call it? They say evolving dungeons. As you become stronger, procedurally generated dungeons will increase in oh. difficulty and complexity to keep you on your toes. So it's like giving you that reason to keep coming back and going with it. I love that. I think that was the other one I was going to get into is like, what will keep me coming back, right? The difficulty spike is what I'm looking for. Something that's, sure. you know, fun to learn, but also punishing by the end of it, where it's like, I want more. I want you to punish me and challenge me. And at the same time, I know we can only have so many dungeons come in at the beginning of the game, but make them procedurally generated, right? Switch them up every single time I jump in. So I don't know left from right, up from down and where I need to go. So I love hearing you say just that. That really gets me excited. I guess my questions would then lead into is like, did you see any legendary enemies? What kind of bosses can I see? I think a Diablo now is what I jump to because yeah. that's my kind of dungeon crawler. And I know you identify with that. It's like, what will I see out of these kind of enemies? I think the main thing you're going to see out of it is the drink box charm. You know, what I mean, when I think of something like Guacamelee or Guacamelee 2, when I think of something like Severed, right, you know, that art style and that humor that's infused with character design. And so it was, you know, like a giant crab person I was fighting. And then, you know, the, it was also the ability of them spawning their other stuff around it. There was this really weird boss that was like this monstrosity with these red horns coming out. And like, I forget which one of his waves as you work through his three waves. Eventually he's pulling the what I thought were his horns out of his back back and throwing them at me like boomerangs while I'm also dodging off his stuff. And, you know, you, it's funny you brought up the uh, the tiger or whatever, right? Like there's this th obviously like I was talking about is the your forms have a letter grade to them on the form tree. It's about getting your usually you'll see the form you've unlocked. Then you'll see it branch off and you'll see it say like a on the line knowing they're like, OK, cool. Once I upgrade this form to an A, that'll unlock that other form up there that I can go play with. Right. Uh, again, the abilities that you're mixing and matching, they're upgrading on their own or they're upgrading you're choosing to upgrade them as they go too and stuff in there is like the rabbit attack that i love so much one of the things in there is that you know there's a chance that you're going to pull out the rabbit but it's actually going to be a tiger which obviously does more damage and can take more it, it be around longer and stuff like that there's all these different trade-offs and even on the abilities you have and you like there's all these benefits and buffs you could have that go on with it as well well i like that a lot greg so are you telling me when i hear that does that mean it would benefit me to level up a certain form, right? Get those abilities really dialed in on their best formation and then move on to the one form that I like. And so I can use those better abilities. Would that carry over if I have like an A class ability on the magician? Would that ability be A class on my horse form that I continue to go right. back yeah, to? Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, if you, it's not the A ranking and stuff is on your form itself, then you're upgrading the individual abilities. And yes, those are, when you go into the map and I'm, or into your book, I should say, and I'm sure Raj is showing it now, you'll see all your upgrades laid out on a page. And those, or all your moves laid out on a page and you can upgrade them there with the resources right those are yours you can take those and trade those between people and not like if you took the bite from the rat and applied it to the ranger you wouldn't start at the base level you would start with whatever you've already upgraded on that to get there and so you raised i think my big question about it again is a game like legitimately i would be playing this especially with remote play or uh, yeah with remote play now uh, through you know the the power of the xbox uh being able to do it right would be the thing of going through and having that conversation of like cool is it worth the you know like you mentioned the bodybuilder the trailer shows the horse you know there's people down the line like looking at them and being like do i want to power through to that person or do i want to sit there and upgrade everything i have here and try to get really good with it that's always that great trade-off in these kind of games right of the risk reward of do I want to make what I have awesome or do I want to save resources for when I get to that thing? If I like that move, I have that ready to go. Uh, 
I can't wait for those conversations with this. The game is coming this summer. They were kind of uh, ambiguous about it, right? Uh, later this year, and then somebody was like, late summer. So hopefully late summer, we'll see. Uh, that'll be the big question of having it, right? Of having it in your hands and having actual time with it and being able to go further than this. But I can't wait from what I saw. And it's worth pointing out, the music, you know me, Mike, uh, Taylor Swift, Weezer, I don't have an ear for music. I, I like what I like, right? But the music was so good in this. And when I asked him about it, it's uh, Jim Guthrie from uh, who Ooh. did the uh, Sword and Sorcery composing. Uh, composing. So really great stuff there. Uh, you know, it's it's what I love about independent developers. You know what I mean? Drinkbox could obviously sit there and make guacamelee after guacamelee after guacamelee and just do that. But they always want to test themselves and stretch and do something different. And honestly, just from this taste, this is and I, this is big words for me because I love I've loved Drinkbox since, you know, uh, Tales from Space, about a Blob and Mutant Blobs Attack and all that jazz. Like when they got their start because of the PlayStation Indie Pub Fund, which they've now turned their back on PlayStation, huh, Drinkbox? Doesn't matter who gave you your start, you'll stab them in the back and throw them. No, uh, like I've liked them so much. And this just from this taste is probably the most excited I've been for one of their games. And I, you know, don't get me wrong. I love Guacamelee. I platinum severed. I, uh, I can't say enough nice things about drink box. Uh, but this is the game that I was like, Oh my God. Like I can see me just sinking hour after hour into this. Oh, Greg, I, I'm so excited just from the trailer that I got to watch. And I'm really excited to see the gameplay. Of course, that music was banging. I think that's a big one for these games as well to keep you hooked keep you feeling the intensity at those big moments of like what's the beat what's the beat drop where's it going where's it taking you and i love the music that we heard i love the cute art style i mean the forms were looking great and the way you describe the bosses it's like man i'm excited to see like what kind of unique bosses we'll see what their variations yeah. are and like you said it's procedurally generated will i see different forms of bosses will there be different kind of like variations of that boss doing different things later on down the game and as well greg i guess my other question to you is like I see these cute forms. Will they have different skins or like different variations of their colors at all? Did you know? Great question. That? I did. I didn't notice anywhere that that would be, but I wouldn't dissuade it because it's uh, obviously you jump into a demo, you get a whole bunch of stuff thrown at you. When Roger's showing it, right, you have these blue tokens, you have the magic wands, and you have pig uh, a piggy bank full of money. The blue tokens are what you're using to upgrade your moves. The the magic wands I think are based off of the quest, which were helping unlock other forms. Yeah, that's what you were doing with that. I'm I'm watching actually my gameplay that Roger is editing, not at the same time live, but like then there, and then the money. I'm not even sure if that's I'm gonna use that on like up uh, if I'm gonna use that at like a merchant somewhere what am I getting from them like there was you know you're dropped in here for 30 minutes 45 minutes of a gameplay of an hour and then some Q&A there's a lot of questions I still have about it but I'm excited to get all the answers when I get the game oh I can't wait for all of us to get more answers especially because you brought up the remote play right project x yeah. cloud now moving out and really we're seeing a lot of cloud games being shared on Game Pass. And I'm excited to see, like you touched on PC, right? We know it's gonna be on Steam for sure. You said the Windows Store. So you have to assume it will be on the PC and Xbox version of Game Cloud or Game Pass. So, yeah. But like, man, does that come to cloud too? Because that would really round out this stable of gameplay where I could play this on the bus ride. I could play this on my walk, a nice hike up in Tahoe, and then come back home and continue the grind, continue the questing as we should say, ah. which I'm really, really excited about, Greg. I mean. This trailer got me excited. Hearing your enthusiasm gets me super excited. Knowing the pedigree of gear or of Drinkbox, like Drink I'm really yeah. excited about all of this. So, I mean, you got me rambling and excited. That means we're all pretty excited about this. And late summer, I, I, I'm in. I'm in for this. Yeah, it's something really, really unique, and I, I'm down for this weird, uh, you know, action RPG Diablo Kid Chameleon all mashed into one. I'm stoked to see more about it. Any chance for a multiplayer? Did it look like it could have a multiplayer? <laughs> Was no, no multiplayer. Enough? No, yeah, there's no multiplayer in there, and I didn't, I didn't ask because it just, I, I either they said that or just I didn't pick up on why the way it's designed looks completely single player okay. in terms of how you're doing it. Yeah. Either way, Don't I'll put down my multiplayer sure. ways to check this out and have some fun. I'm all about it. <laughs> good, good. Oh, in full disclosure, of course, I should have said this earlier too. My apologies. Uh, actually, Pop Agenda, my the one of my, my wife's company, is doing PR on this. That's not why we did it. I, I don't care who works with Drinkbox. I'm gonna follow Drinkbox game to the end of the time. And she wasn't even there for the demo. Some kid named George. I don't know who this clown is. Except I do know this clown. What's up? Former Rational Passions. I digress. I love that. Well, you also are coming over to the Xbox side just to play it, so you know it's a big deal right now. Exactly right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a big deal. <laughs> That's all I got, Greg. No more questions for me. Just the excitement right. and saying, put it in my hands. Let's play. So I'm awesome that you got to play a little bit of it, and I can't wait to play for myself. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's your first impressions of Nobody Saves the World slash an X cast segment. Remember, if you're watching on youtube.com slash kind of funny games, the first impressions, you should check out the X cast this Saturday when it goes up at 6 a.m. Pacific time on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and podcast services around the globe to get more Xbox news. And if you're listening to the X cast, you should go watch uh, the first impressions for nobody saves the world because the game, I honestly think the game's a visual treat. And I really think you should go check it out and get a look at it because the characters are cute and funny already, let alone with everything they're doing in the world. I'm super excited for this one when it comes apparently late summer to xbox series x slash s xbox one windows store steam and of course xbox game pass so i can't wait mike love that greg thanks for having me on the first impressions and thanks for coming to talk some x cast with me and the gang